台湾，啊，台湾上了哈，上了，台湾，啊，欧拉，哦 ，OK， 叫威龙鸡，没有，啊，啊，谢谢，嗯，拜托拜托，不用不用不用不用不用不用，谢谢。坐的舒服了，坐舒服，请师傅们坐。Thank you, thank you for your love, thank you for coming. Today we are like Korea, ah, very generous. <laughs> what? What is that? <laughs> wow, new color. Hmm. 黄金呢？哦、oh. ，Yeah, prepare your ears. Summer, huh? summer wear this nice. <laughs> summer very nice. Are you guys okay? Cool? Yes. The aircon works. Yes. Yeah, I feel cooler now. Before I was sweating. It's good, eh? Wow. Luxury. Luxurious meditation place. Anyasio, welcome. Last time we talked about this uh, special meditation method, which is very difficult to practice, very dangerous also. Oh, I wrote a lot. I don't know when I wrote it. Or maybe I should read it to you, huh? Okay, this one is not for you. <laughs> not for you. This one last time read already. I think I wrote this before I talked to you, but then I forgot it at home. I found it, so I just read it as is. Yeah, okay. And whatever I have told you already, then it's no harm to repeat. Why is that the method dangerous? Because you can be stuck. In that kind of essential feeling, and then be attached to that instead of going up, <laughs> you're stuck there or going down because of uh, attachment to sensual, physical pleasure. It's very difficult to let go. So I wrote here, Guan Yin method, including the light and the sound, is the best for you. Mm? Best for anyone. Because it is our self nature. I probably told that already, but I can repeat what I wrote here. Okay? Yeah. Sometimes I'm inspired, yeah, to write down what I know so that I don't forget to tell you. Okay? I know already. It's just if I tell you without writing, I might forget a little detail here and there. Okay? So I wrote it down. Quan Yin and Quan Quang mean listening. To your self nature inside, in two forms, the inside heavenly light, which is your Buddha nature or God nature, and another condensed, more concentrated form of light is the sound, which is also your original nature, Buddha nature uh, or God nature. Now, so this method of Guan Yin, meaning listening to your self nature, and Guan Quang. Seeing yourself nature is the best for you because it's our self nature, and our self nature is Buddha nature or God nature. When we see our nature or uh, listen to our inner nature, that means we see our own Buddha nature, our own God quality. Thus, we are one with the Buddhas in all directions. So, if we can see. Our own Buddha nature. We can recognize our own Buddha nature or God nature. Then, we are one with the Buddhas, one with our God self. Therefore, nothing dangerous can come out of that, because it's our own nature. I wrote、uh, a little shorter, but I explained a little bit. I told you last time. I continue more. So, because we are one with the Buddhas, one with God, so we will be. Blessed 
even though we haven't completely realized our true, complete nature, but we still are already together with the Buddhas, because the Buddha has this nature. God is this nature also. In the beginning was the world, meaning the sound, yeah? And the world was with God, and the world was God. Remember that? So the Buddha said this is Buddha nature is the same as the beginning of the sound was God, God nature. So if we are with that, then we're safe. Nah? We are not with anything else. <laughs> we are with ourselves. If you are with yourself, <laughs> yeah, you feel peace, you feel wise, you can be calm, and you can be loving, contented, feeling happily at home with all beings as well. Not just Buddhas and God, but also with all beings. The more we know ourselves, true self, the more we be at peace with all beings and be loving to all beings. Of course, because they also have the same nature. Wow, you know everything. What do I need to sit here for? <laughs> it's just a pastime, okay? Since you know everything already, uh, I just pretend also I know something, and then uh, we just pass time seeing each other as good friends. They have the same nature as ours because all beings have this same nature, Buddha nature or God's quality. Otherwise, where do you think we come from? Hmm? We come from this uh, wooden floor? And from the sofa? Maybe? No? Or from this kind of light? No. There must be something very mighty, very powerful that created us, created our nature. And the one who created it is one with us, the same. Yeah? God made man in his own image. Yeah. So that means we are from God. The Bible say that. And the Buddha said that all beings have the same Buddha nature. Did he say that? Yes. God nature, Buddha nature, is same or not same? Same. Because <laughs> how can you have two nature inside? Do you have two nature inside? Cannot. So that means Christianity, Buddhism, or any other good Religion said the same thing. Because the master, the founder of these religions, knew the same things, realized the same things. Maybe they used a little different terminology according to the time of their realization and teaching, and according to the background of the country, the languages. But it's the same. Uh, you know all this already, so I don't make it a long, long-winded <laughs> kind of uh, lecture anymore. I read on, huh? But we should practice well, because the more we recognize this self-nature, the more we are our own true self. The wiser we become, the more loving, compassionate to all beings and closer to God, to Nirvana. Therefore, all the masters of old and now still teaching this method, the Kuan Yin method, self-nature realization. You can practice other methods, and you will maybe eventually realize your self-nature, because you will see the light. You might hear the sound also. But it's not very stable, as if you have opened already your own self-nature with the light and the sound. Then it becomes daily practice. Even if you don't practice, it's already open. It will be automatic with you all the time. You won't lose it anymore. Hmm? You can develop more, yeah? But you won't lose it. Just adhere to the five precepts. Even if you reach the fifth level already, please remember to keep the five precepts. Because the five precepts, not only protecting you, but protect other beings as well. What kind of Buddha go out and kill a chicken and eat? Huh? For example, yeah? 
But after you become enlightened, more and more enlightened, of course you will have only compassion and love for other beings. You will not want to eat anything. But it's just logically speaking, I'm just telling you that to let you know why, okay? So that you might be more clear, okay? In your mind. The same with every other precept is to protect you, yeah? Protect others around you and your country and our world. If a person already enlightened and keep drinking and getting drunk all the time, is it good for our society? No, for example, like that. So not drinking, not getting drunk is also protecting our society. Eh? Because if you say you are enlightened and then you go out drinking and drunk driving and then you might kill other people or hurt yourself, yeah? wreck your car, and then you have to pay a lot of money to repair the car if you're not hurt. And if you're not hurt or you're dead, then, oh well. Bad example huh? of a practitioner, right? Bad example for your kids, yeah, for your friends, your neighbor, anyone who knows that you're practicing spiritually, but you are a drunken person, and you might even hurt someone else. And then if you have drug, for example, huh? you say, okay, I take drug, uh, it's only harming me, uh, only um, costing me money, but I don't harm anybody. You do harm somebody. You do harm anyone that see you doing that. They might copy, yeah, and harm themselves. And they might spend too much money, which should be used for their family benefit. And then, for you also, if you spend a lot of money from your family, then of course your family won't feel good and maybe fight together, and it could be more serious, hurting each other, uh, hurting the children. Once you don't get what you want, you might hurt family to get the money to come out and buy your drug, for example, like that. And your children will starve, your family will be broken. It's bad for your happiness and for your family's happiness. So even though you say you only harm yourself, but you do harm others. That's just some example. And if you keep telling lies, for example, no one will trust you anymore. And one day, people will find out, and maybe you'll be in more trouble. It's just example. And stealing or robbing, you might be in jail. Yeah? For example, like that. And jail is not a fun place to be. You might think, it doesn't matter, I can go to jail. But then you go to jail, you will encounter other inmates, and not all of them are friendly. It's not just the jail, it is people who live in jail together with you. They may harm you in different ways. If the physical intercourse between man and woman, you call it sex, I, I'm shy to mention that word. <laughs> When I first mentioned it, I was really very shy, but somebody asked me about it. I had to put on a brave face and tell him about what, why, a long time ago, some years ago. But even then, nowadays, if I mention that, I still feel very shy. I don't know why. Forgive me if I'm not so brave as you think. I'm not all that brave. I'm not all that very uh, uh, free to talk about anything. It's because I'm your teacher, I have to. But I always try not to mention that if I can. So, if sex is also one of the 84,000 methods to practice, why didn't the Buddha ever mention it? He even told people, try not to follow the lustful temptation. Because he knew it is very dangerous. I told you last time already. And then, suppose you practice with one person, and you might get addicted to that person, and then that person doesn't want to practice with you anymore because some reason, then you might try to get someone else, someone else, someone else. And then it will be very, very chaotic and troublesome, not to yourself only, but to other people involved. Yeah. Even if you want to be a teacher of this so-called tantric yoga, you are not safe from the danger of addiction to sensual pleasure. I also written here, it's a dangerous way because you could be entangled in, in its powerful pleasure 
and can't reach your goal or even forget it altogether. In this physical world, sex is the most common yet the most powerful force to reach enlightenment, very powerful. If you marry or in love, you have boyfriend, girlfriend, you understand what I'm saying. I better not try this. But if you can avoid it, then try the way I have told you last time. The saints, the enlightened saints, they uh, have uh, uh, physical contact with their wives only several times a year, just to have children only. And after that, if they have enough children the way they think they should as an obligation to family, or just to have some children for the parents or love for the wife or the husband, they will stop it after having enough children, even though they are still married. At one time, Kabir the weaver saint, very famous poet also, he told people not to indulge in this kind of sensual pleasure, but and, they, and they asked him why, why was he married? And he had a sensual pleasure before with his wife. He said, I was not enlightened. <laughs> I was blind then. Yeah. So that means after fully enlightened, he and his wife become best friends only. And his wife was also a saint of high order. And she respected him then as a master, just like every other disciple. Sankabir is one of the you know, most famous saints in India. And you know already, sometimes people say, what's the difference between your wife and my wife? You know, uh, some of the men ask, they say, ah, she's different. <laughs> she's different, yeah. And the man, you know, the disciple or maybe uh, uh, nosy people ask, well, what's the difference? So Kabir say, she obey absolutely every one of my commandments every one of my requests. And you know that. Uh, some story I told you already. If some of you don't know, maybe I uh, repeat uh, just a s small portion. Yeah? So that person asks and then he tell Kabir, prove it to me. Prove it to me that your wife really listen to everything you ask. So Kabir said to his wife, she's nearby next to him, he said, go out please and get me some stones. You know, a round stone or any stone. And then she brought it in. He said, now make a fire, put some oil in it, and fry the stone for me. <laughs> she did exactly just that. <laughs> uh, so, okay, finally that person, Kapish, understood that Kabir's wife is truly different from uh, other men's wife. And another time, they run out of flour to make chapati. And uh, Kabir sent his wife to the neighbor, neighboring shop to borrow some flour. But the man, the owner of the shop, uh, uh, fancy Kabir's wife. Yeah, a long time already. He always tried, but he never succeed. This time, because Kabir was short of, of flour to make chapati for his guests, he has many true seekers came to his house. And of course he wants to treat them well, <laughs> well, whatever he can. It's just a weaver, you know, he has not earned that much money, even though uh, he has princess as disciple. And the princess gave him one diamond and he did not accept it. But then the princess stuck it under his roof <laughs> somewhere and say, Master, if ever you need it, please sell it so that you can have some decent uh, lifestyle. So some years later, she, she asked him, how come you still live like a poor weaver? What happened to the diamond I gave you? He said, wherever you put it, it is still there. <laughs> yeah? So he still live a life of a simple weaver. Whatever he earns, he uses. And whenever he has extra, if somebody comes to him in need or visit him, he treat them with that. But that day, too many people came, including some monks. Uh, at that time, mostly just monks came visit him. 
So the monks, of course, had nothing to offer. The monks in India, they go with only one staff, one bottle, like a god, to get the water. That's it. And then one, one clothes. One they uh, cover around here and one they uh, wrap around them. You know, maybe a blanket, maybe a cloth. That's all they have, the, the Indian monk. The Indian monks that I have seen, okay? The Hindu monks, yeah, and other monks and nuns as well. Same, same. Even nuns there, they are also like that. Therefore, Kabir has to go borrow some flour. But this man, the owner of the shop, had taken much liking to the wife of Kabir a long time already. So this time he used this opportunity to uh, kind of force her, say, if you have a physical relationship with me, then I give you as much flour as you want to take. The wife, of course, don't like that, come home and told her husband, Kabir said, what? Just that and you did not even agree? Come, I take you back there. <laughs> because it's raining and it's muddy. He's a gentleman, so he carry her to the shop and tell the owner, here, my wife, please be gentle, take care of her and give me the flowers. Oh, the owner of the shop was so shocked. Who wouldn't be, right? He thought he should do it secretly with the wife, but the husband knew, and then even offer him, his wife, openly. He was so scared. Also, he saw both of them, even though it's raining hard outside, both of them are dry, just like we are now. So he was so scared, and he begged for forgiveness. And he said, please, take as much flour as you need. I will never dare to offer both of you sanely, uh, practitioner again. Please forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. All right, so they have flour and nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned about the saints. After enlightenment, they practice abstinence. They still have wife, children maybe, but they keep abstinence from physical pleasure. They keep themselves abstinence from sex. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Ah, uh, if uh, I really don't like to speak it, but let's be straight is good because sometimes talk around you don't understand anything, yeah? Or you pretend you don't understand. Fine. Therefore, I mention all the saints. They practice abstinence. Keep yourself busy. If you are bothered by that powerful force of nature that imparted within your being as one of the enlightening method, just be busy. Help others instead of thinking of yourself too much. When you're too busy, you come home, you just meditate a little and then you drop dead. <laughs> you, you have no more energy to follow your inside desire. And living alone, of course, helps, okay? And living in uh, separate rooms, separate houses, as wife and husband, does help. And do not uh, look left and right, back and forth if any object of your adoration appear in front of your eyes. The monks was taught by the Buddha to look only about one meter in front of them so that they can see the insects, so they don't hurt them. They don't look anywhere at all. Don't look at the woman. And look upon all the women as your mother. And for the nun, look upon all the men as your father or your brother, or your sister, like that, to avoid trouble. If any desirous thought creep up in your mind, you cut, 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 yeah? Think of something else, recite the five names. Try as best as you can. Of course, it's very powerful, this one. Very, very powerful. It is very powerful. It even can create human beings. Imagine how more powerful can any other power be. Create maybe not just one human, but many humans. Create the whole world as you see it. So how powerful that force inside you. If you cannot tame it, then of course it's, it's understandable. Huh? Just try to. Maybe that's why when women and men came of age, they have to marry and slowly tame it. Try your best, try your best. 
because this physical pleasure not only entangle you in a lower type of energy, but also expand your energy too much. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Now I don't think I need to say any more, do I? No? No. Okay. All the politicians in our former generation knew all this also. Everyone knows actually, but they use this power also even to exchange for lands, <laughs> for more uh, expansion of their country, yeah, by marrying their daughter of or their son of to neighboring country to exchange for some piece of province as dowry for the marriage. In Vietnam before, they did that also. One of our princess, famous fame for being beautiful and virtuous, so our neighbor king, Vietnam before, is not all the way from Hanoi, all the way to the Kamau, no, no. It was only from uh, on the northern side. Then slowly, with this marriage, we get the central of Vietnam now. And later, some more excuses. It's a long story. You want to hear? Uh, not that long, but I make it short. There was a song about it, yeah, that I sing sometime before Christmas. This princess, absolutely beautiful, out of this world kind of, of beauty. And she's coming of age already, 16 at the time, and she was in love with her, the general, the royal general of the, the guards. Uh -huh. But then the king of other country, a neighboring country, maybe threatened to make war. So our king pacified by saying, we should be neighbor, we should be friend instead. I have beautiful princess. The king wanted that. The, the neighbor king wanted that. He said, unless the princess married to him, he will not let them at that time be in peace. So the king offered the princess. And of course, it's a heartbreaking love story for the princess and the general. He has to accompany her as a chief of the bodyguards to bring her to the other country, to offer her to another man, no matter if he's a king or not. He's another man. And he wasn't that good looking. Yeah. So, after that, our country have peace with the neighbor, fine, and have uh, I think two, two provinces extra added into our nation, again okay? expanded our country border, fine. But later when this king died, because the, the king of the neighboring country at, at that time called Champa, Champa country, Cham, Nuk Cham, he was already older when he married the young princess. And then he died, and in that country, um, Tradition is that the king body will be burned, and the princess or whatever consorts he had at that time all have to die with him in the same way, alive, burned alive. Because it was a wrong translation, one wrong word. Because that time Champa also uh, influenced by Indian culture. If you see some of their stupas that they built, and the sculpting outside, the structure is very much like India, uh, many of the stupas. Stupas is people either built to bury some important person inside, or to, to uh, worship uh, some of the saints' relic, you know, like tooth, the saints or the Buddha die, they worship the tooth, they build a stupa, make it elaborate, painting or, or sculpting outside beautiful decoration to, to worship. So if you see some of the stupas that are left over in our country, Vietnam nowadays, you will see they very much resemble the Indian kind of a structure of building. I'm just telling you this, nobody tell me, I'm, it's just my calendar, okay? Because I, I saw it, I observed and I... I see the similarity. So the princess 
who is still young and beautiful at that time, was going to be burned with the king, accompanied with all the concubines and second queen and all that, all queen and concubine. In some culture, they believe that these people will accompany the king in the afterlife to keep him company and to serve him, take care of him. And there's another theory, I think, because in India, a long time ago, people did that too. If the husband die or the king die, an you know, important person die, then uh, the wives, uh, the concubines, the uh, queen had to be burned together because the scriptures say that when the king die, then the wife stand in front of the pyre, I mean the, the fire that they make to burn the body of the king, for example. They say in front of the pyre, pyre, the fire. But then they don't know, somebody maybe deliberately or mistakenly took out the word in front. They say in the fire. Of course, your wife, you stand in front of your husband, uh, cremation, no? Of course, right? It's the, the closest family kin. And then there's an in the fire instead of in front of the fire. So many women has been burned this way. Imagine, imagine how cruel that can be. So. I guess maybe because of the Hinduism or Whatism at that time influence from India, the tradition in Champa royalty at that time also following that. So our princess was in danger. So of course our king, the Vietnamese king at that time, sent the general, the one who protected her all this time, and sent also accompany her to to the uh, next uh, country for the marriage. So he sent him and many others, some of the trusted guards sent to their neighbor country, trying with all their might to save the princess' life. So he did. Somehow they did. But after that, um, the general and the princess are no more seen anywhere in the public eye. They just run away with each other from the politics, from royalty, from this kind of trade, human sentiment and love, just for land or for peace even. They just run away. They didn't ever come back. We understand. I would also. And the general at this time would never ever want to risk one more time to let the princess go back to the royal palace. He did one time, and he's pained so much already. So this time he has a chance, he won't ever let her go back to the palace again, and you would understand that. And she probably would never want to go back. If a father can give away a daughter like that, uh, I don't think the daughter would trust the father again, ever, even if it's for peace sacrifice her, but she would be scared the whole life already. The scar in the heart would never heal completely. I told you that formerly, or maybe even now, people use this physical sex to exchange for many other things, and even to maybe willingly just to promote themselves higher, to higher position, to more favorable situation as well. It probably happens in many places, not everywhere. We've seen some time in the movies, but uh, in real life probably also happens. As I said, to be able to create a human like this, yeah? Can you imagine how powerful that is? So how can we, as a normal physical person, withstand this? strong creative power and enlightening power that come with that as well. Our world has never been completely liberated and because of this power also. And our world has populated sometimes beyond necessity and beyond our economical standards. Yeah? 
because of this power also. And really, can anyone uh, withstand it? Okay? I, I read again because it's too much. So powerful that it could even create a life, you know? Even animals also create another life because of this power. But animals, most animals, they are more, they're more clever than us. They have physical contact only during season. And then they don't have anything to do with each other again. Except us humans, we continue far beyond season. I don't know if we ever know what a season is for that. But the animals, they only have it in their seasons, okay? And then they take care of each other and take care of their offspring. And we do it all the time. It creates a life or even some lives at the same time. Some people have quadruplet or quintuplet even. Or twin, yeah, you know all that, okay? So it's so powerful, so powerful that if the humans succumb to this, we will not feel surprised. It's just for an enlightening method, it's even <laughs> more troublesome. Because it's so difficult to handle, to tame, or to use it for enlightenment practice. So it is rarely used by true practitioners as the negative side effect is too great a risk to take. The Buddha is well aware of this fact that he even advised his monks not to look at women, even if a woman is already 70 years old and lying sick on the bed. Right? <laughs> But I told you last time also, some time ago. Okay. Maybe you, the lay Buddhist, have not read this part, but all the monks and the nuns know it. That's why I asked them. Okay, I read this when I was uh, 20 something. Okay, so I might forgot. <laughs> okay, imagine 40 something, 50 years already. And not bad, eh? <laughs> Still remember. I just asked them so to confirm with you, to verify it, so that you know that I did not tell you something wrong. Okay, very difficult to withstand this power. The Buddha knew. So the monks and the nuns only look one meter ahead. They don't look anywhere. So I can see only insects to avoid, you know, to avoid killing insects, etc., etc. Okay, the other I talk already. So the Buddha knew that almost for certain that all men will fail this method. This we don't need to, to be a Buddha to know, <laughs> right? <laughs> the Buddha knew. <laughs> I think all men knew. <laughs> you don't have to wait until you become a Buddha to realize this trouble. That almost all men will fail this method. Such a powerful force lay within our fragile and vulnerable physical. It's just too much to handle. Especially since we have been stripped of our knowledge of our divine self-nature, yeah? We did not even know about our self-nature, and we are endowed with this kind of much powerful creative force. So this is very difficult for people. Some people call that hormone, but it is a force of this, supposed to be for enlightening power within us that makes it that way. So in the scientific way, we call that a hormone. We are stripped of all knowledge of our divine origin and our divine wisdom. We know nothing. We're born deaf, dumb, spiritually, yeah, and blind, spiritually, yeah. We have eyes where we don't see, have ears where we don't hear. So in the Bible also say the same. Seeing you see, but you do not perceive. Hearing you hear, but you do not understand. That's what it means. We are deaf, blind, spiritually. We see only out the thing 
we see nothing of our real self and uh, the real world within. So we stripped off all of that. So left alone to face all obstacles and troubles that heaped on us by the negative power of Maya. The powerful force inside we cannot handle. And outside we're heaped on with all kinds of obstacles, temptation, trouble. <laughs> that is already too much to handle. So truly, if we don't go hide within our protective cell, then we really do life after life, come back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, do the same thing or similar things, never can be liberated. If there is no Buddha in the world, no saints, no enlightened person to help us with their blessing, with their compassion, we are doomed forever. If we can be reborn again as human or even as animal, it's already too good. Just worry we might be pushed too hard, that we do wrong thing, that we'll be condemned to hell, maybe forever. Remember Surangama Sutra. Even the practitioner sincerely want to practice. But then once he got something, some power, some knowledge, he begin to want something else. Because not being guided by a true enlightened master such as Buddha or Jesus or Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. When these masters were alive, okay, they can help us, but they mostly push us to go find living master. They help in any way they can, except initiation. That has to be done through the portal of physical uh, opening, okay, which an, a living master in a physical form can perform, together with the blessing that flow toward the true seeker by the master. Share the blessing. Share the knowledge, share the grace. Otherwise, we are doomed forever. And after we already enlightened by a master, then all the master can help us inside. They all can help if we pray. The master that transfer the uh, enlightening wisdom can also help inside. But many other master, they are always around, also helping us. Just lean on them. Just pray to them. Don't forget them. Always pray for help. Okay, any help we get. Because in this world, if we don't have this kind of help, we drown. Any time. Because we live in physical world, in enemy country. This is our enemy land. It's not our real land. Our real land is in Nirvana, is in heaven. So, to be here, we need help from all kind of invisible beings who are more powerful than us in our stage of young enlightenment, yeah, young self-knowledge. Yeah. We are just learning to walk. We cannot run, we cannot fly yet, so we rely on the inner master power, the physical inner master power, and the past and future masters all the time. If lacking real protection, most beings succumb to this powerful force from within, the creative power, which is supposed to be used for a more noble purpose, for enlightenment and liberation. We cannot use it. Actually, very difficult because we don't have protection. If we already lack protection, and we practice. No, not even thinking of practice. Most people in the world, they don't even know this method, you know, like the, the power that can be used for enlightenment. They don't know anyway. And they don't have protection, mostly not. Not strong enough for this, yeah? So I say, what a pity indeed. Taikoshi, rarely used, rarely can succeed. But God is good <laughs> because He gives us so many methods to choose, huh? Many methods to choose. But the Kuan Yin method is the best. <laughs> All the Buddhas say that. 
Kwani Bodhisattva say that? Manchu Sri Bodhisattva say that? Uh, Jesus taught that. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught that. So when you see the Muslim praying, they do pray almost like when you do Kwani. Ah, it's very difficult to let go of things that you believe. It's difficult to let go of your preconceived ideas and brainwashing technique or whatever ideas that you got from the society. To seek enlightenment is already difficult. How can you? To seek only, not to talk about having it yet. How can you? You work eight hours a day at least. Before that, you must uh, drive your car or go on bus one hour, sometimes two, three hours, depends on where you live. Stuck in traffic, sweating at work, and dealing with work, and then dealing with colleagues and bosses and everything already. And go home, take care of wife, kids, parents, uh, <laughs> a friend's birthday, whatever, coming, <laughs> anything. A wedding day, woo, if you don't remember, <laughs> then your wife will, will make trouble. For example, yeah, and her birthday, uh, everybody's birthday. You must remember, your calendar is full of things. Every day, what you have to do, full of oh, wash dishes, uh, wash clothes, dry clothes, uh, buy new present for whoever necessary. Your most important person, your wife, <laughs> your husband, especially wives. Husbands don't care too much if the wife forget his birthday. He doesn't even remember his birthday or any day anyway. <laughs> so his wife is the most important person in the family. If you forget her birthday, wow, that is uh, something that you need protection <laughs> from all the saints. And if you forget your wedding day, wow, that's even the worst thing that could happen to you. Okay? <laughs> That's why there was a joke. Uh, maybe it was on the uh, SMTV also. The wife woke up and told the husband, Do you know what day it is? So the husband said, Of course I know. <laughs> okay. And then he went out, went to work, you know, and then sent chocolate, flowers, and <laughs> gift to her, his wife at home. Also, when he came back, the, the wife told him, Wow, that's the best ground hawk day I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> in America, there is a day called Groundhog Day. Formerly, we don't have clock. We don't have a time to know when spring time is. So on Groundhog Day, if they caught one coming out of the den, out of their winter hibernation, then spring is coming. <laughs> so they celebrate Groundhog Day for that. And the, the wife just casually mentioned, and then the husband thought maybe it's her birthday. Don't even care to check calendar. Even if he check, he wouldn't know what day is what. <laughs> so he sent her chocolate, a flower, and beautiful gifts and all that, thinking <laughs> he'd done a good job <laughs> until he came home. <laughs> because mostly a wife would say that. You know what day it is to remind him to remember that's her birthday or wedding day or whatever important day in their life, you know, honeymoon day or whatever, or the first day they argue and then make up, <laughs> etc., etc., who knows? Who knows what woman wants and think? Not you guys, maybe or not, I hope. Hmm. Leave your man alone, huh? <laughs> Let him be. To be a man is difficult already. And to be your man, I'm not sure. <laughs> How more difficult can it be? So all the women out there, have mercy, huh? Yeah, now I am continuing. Uh, I think I've done. The note is gone, so we go to the calendar. Oh my God, only 20 minutes. Is there any question that you want to ask me urgently, importantly? Otherwise, uh, this story seems to be long, huh? Wow, it's a very long story. Yeah, it's a long story, very long. One, two, three, four, five pages. So, never mind. You ask me a question and uh, my calendar could be even longer. <laughs>
Next time I'll read you another story. Any question about this and that and, you know, stuff? <laughs> Any stuff? Bu <laughs> Okay, <laughs> So we should try to keep the atmosphere, the energy pure for everyone to benefit. I love all of you. If not, I would not have to go through a lot of trouble. When I come out with you, I don't look like I have trouble. But I do have trouble. Everyone live on this planet, even the Master Buddha, have trouble. Hmm? Look at Jesus, what trouble brought him. Look at Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. They do nothing wrong. Only teach people good things. And still being harmed. The three are just symbolic. There are many more that you don't know of. Untold suffering. Unimaginable suffering. And Lord Mahavira also. For the enlightenment of beings, he suffers so much. And I also thank you for your love. I really thank you for all your love. I feel it, and I love it, and I thank you. Thank you so much for your love. I know, I know your love. And this love makes people feel comfortable. Yeah, not uh, this kind of attached love or binding love or small love. This is a universal love, unconditional love, and it's very comfortable to feel that. At home, try also to be unconditional. Try to love each other unconditionally. Unconditionally doesn't mean you do not uh, try to point out others, uh, maybe mistakes, that there could be a better way to do. And if it's a small thing, then forgive each other and just say, I prefer you not have done that, yeah, but I still love you. Uh, and if it's really big and concerning a family, welfare or health or their own health, you must tell them gently, if it works. If it doesn't work, then have to use a little bit less gentle way to do, but have to, okay? But still love unconditionally, okay? Right, always. That's the only love we should have and that's the only love we should give, okay? I know you're nothing, but to do is difficult. <laughs> try. <laughs> Every time you fail, try again until you succeed. We always have to try. When you first learn to write alphabet, were you able to write immediately? No. no. Mostly we cannot. We have to copy huh? the line that made by the teacher, and then slowly now you write like this. But nowadays we don't worry, we just type <laughs> computer <laughs> and print it out. <laughs> Try to live like a Buddha, even though you have not yet realized uh, your own Buddha nature. Try to live like one. Try, at least try. Uh, to think what the Buddha would do in this situation, what Jesus Christ would do in this situation, what other master would do in my situation. Try. And then slowly, you can get it. And if you don't get it, at least you know you try. And you do not feel bad about yourself. I am trying. I'm just human. I'm trying my best. And pray the masters help me. All the masters help me. At least like that. At least you are reminded of something noble, unconditional, 
the way you would want to live your life. That's what you want. But you're born in this world, it's very imperfect and it makes trouble for you. But you want it that, because it's yourself, you want it to be noble, to be perfect. Try at least, try. It will make you feel comfortable, feel happier and more contented. Yeah. Okay, any question? Ten minutes? 저는 한국에서 출가 수행을 하던 중에 여러 매체를 통해 스승님을 알게 되었습니다. 스승님의 세상을 이롭게 하는 법문과 자비 실천을 보면서 스승님의 출가 제자가 되어야겠다는 어, 생각을 하였습니다. 我看到您的教理之后发觉您的那个爱是无限级的扩大然后您的那个慈悲博爱是他所从来都没有感受到的所以他觉得说他应该跟随你成立的弟子然后呢去继续做这个修行的路며칠 전에 스승님이 주셨다는 법복 약품 약간의 용돈을 전해 받았습니다. 이 자리를 빌려 스승님께 감사의 말씀을 올리고 싶습니다. 저는 지금 스승님께 약속 드리겠습니다. 세상을 이롭게 하시는 스승님 스승님을 도와 열심히 홍법하겠습니다. 그리고 열심히 수행하겠습니다. 이상입니다. 감사합니다. 我要讲的是只有这样而已其实千言万语都讲不出什么话来就感恩跟感谢感谢师父谢谢师父不客气你在那边可以讲啊你跟他说我也很感谢他啊保持师님께서 呃，这个出家僧团的都阿就康山满门听到你的。嗯，因为当出家人好不容易，呃，听我的说法，然后又好不容易相信。呃，出家僧团的时候，师尊你们求你的阿修哥，都安门守着，可可是实诚他哥，
也离开了，相信就离开了。对对对对，因为，呃，这边我不知道，就印度他们出家人是人家很尊重的啊，然后他们也学习很多，哎，经典呐、啊，比方说 The Vedas， 就是印度的最。最古老的经典呢、啊，然后别的经典呢、啊，那个时候他们认为他们什么都知道了，所以那个他们认为不可能有什么法门的，诶、哎，嗯嗯，应信传信，然后马上开悟，他们不相信，他们认为只有出家那条路就就可以解脱了，哎，还有看经典这样子。没有，所以个对时代的法拉门诺，台湾人모르겠지만은인도그때시대는요모든출가선인모든아주큰정도의책을다읽으셨고모든걸다안다고생각하셔갖고요소가문이불이따로된뭐센법같은것은요자기들이배워야될까라고생각을안해갖고그래서그자리를떠나신겁니다그러니까지금도똑같습니다그게정말어좀힘든거겠죠有时候啊，也有出家人比较我执比较多，也有，所以啊，不，不能自己。准备下来要求到的也有。예출가상을하신분들은요어뭔가배운것이좀많으셔갖고아는것도많다생각하고요자기는모든걸아니까그에고가많아갖고좀이렇게뭔가새로운것아니면특별한것을배우기가좀힘듭니다因为出家了以后专出家府，嗯，会简单被被信徒宠坏了。이게이게저기우리가승복을입고요이렇게이법을이렇게따라갈때는요모든중생들이그큰대접을해주셔갖고그뭐랄까겸손한마음이생기지도않고뭐가이게우러나는게있어갖고요좀소용하기가좀어렵습니다음所以我们如果当出家人是要很小心，很小心。예출가상으로서수행을할때는아주아주아주조심하고조심하고조심해야합니다嗯，我看到出家的人，我都会供养啦。啊，出家修行的那个道啊，那个路哈、啊，是当然可以解脱。我有讲过好几次了。啊，如果是数啊，不全数的哈、啊，然后最好一天一餐的，然后持持戒是很重要，两百五十戒要很清楚。저출가선에서정말이게도를닦고있잖아해탈하는것은가능성이없다는건아닙니다250교율을지켜야되고하루한끼먹고그리고모든신구이가깨달아야된다는것도잘알고있,있을겁니다그렇지만그래그러면서도정말어떻게수행을해야지그이거해탈할수있는가또좀어렵습니다남녀도못看的예남자여자도절대로안봅니다看一米前面而已앞에밖에안봅니다생활简单생활은아주간단합니다比方说有两套法衣而已。诶，生活馆都脱不了，给我送你的。一个脱不完。诶，八个都行了，八个我送你的。就可以解脱，第四界。诶，一一三界路继续拉杆走，一个前三界路拉杆过去的。超三界。一个不是三三三界路拉杆过去的。超三界以后就容易可以上，上更多。诶，三三界路拉杆过去，可能可能生活感觉就偏了过去的。在三界以内就不容易。如果没碰，如果没碰到在世佛，在世名师是很困难的。예그상태에서저기명사를만난다는것은아주아주아주어려운일입니다不过在这个娑婆世界啊，又花那么多，当出家人没有名师，很困难的。예이런세상에서서소포세계는요그런상황에서도출가하는것은어려운상황이민도안된그래도출가하신다는그마음은아주거룩합니다능够做得到也是可以解脱。그그상태를유지할수있다는것은요정말해탈도할수는있겠죠。释迦牟尼佛的出家人不一样啊。他跟你不来出家，跟你们脱离不了。哎呀，他跟佛出家不一样。哎，不如他过达拉，不如释迦牟尼不如达拉说出家很大能够是完全脱离能够做。所以你看很清楚，两千别的出家人，男的比丘的，不是佛的，直接的出家的人呢、啊，就离开他的法会了。他佛啊，那么那么开悟啊，天人之道士的讲话呢，就很有道理，很也有证据，也有人解脱，他徒弟都很好的，都都有开悟的，又不是说讲然后没用了。都有用，结果还是另外两千比丘
그때 법회 하실 때는요, 소가분이 제라들이 그렇게 훌륭하시고, 그리고 어, 저기 계율도 잘 지키시고, 모든 걸다 증명이 됐는데도 그 사람 다른 법관 석가모니 부를 따르지 않는 그, 제, 그 사람들은 뭐그 자리에서 2천 명 비구가 그냥 떠나가 버렸잖아요. 그걸 보세요. 음. 믿을, 믿지를 못하니까 그런 겁니다. 교만한 마음도 있고 불신한 마음도 있고 그 개혁을 못 하고 있으니까 그런 상태가 오는 거겠죠. 소의 포도 주자는 모든 걸 술과 스님은요 어렵습니다. 모든 걸다 버릴 수 있는데요. 이 에고만은 정말 버릴 수가 좀 힘든가 봐요. 무롱이 정말 정말 어렵습니다. 예수因为离开所有，所以更增加我执. 네, 모든 걸 버렸기에 그 에고가 더 셉니다. 오, 레오지. 나는 참 훌륭하다. 오, 리자 주조. 나는 집을 나섰다. 네. 什么都 不管. 나는 아무것도 상관하지 않는다. 나는 훌륭하다. 然后比方说吃一天一餐也不一定这样子就够了那人家有一些人不吃啊或是喝水而已吃一天一餐算什么呢嘛叫慢可有时间清楚一杯我就可以了啊就这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个这个
不过他那边是一个方丈是很老的师傅。跟那个僧人开始那个出去呢，就阿舅拿一个马勒新布尼米达。啊，看到他们那些年轻刚来的和尚啊，什么供养都收啊，很欢喜啊，啊。그러니까젊은저기비구들은요남의공양하는거든뭐든지다받아들이고다他就跟他们说，那些信徒啊，是像稻子一样，稻啦，菜稻那种的稻啊，菜，他们信徒来供养就是像菜稻一样。거기그공양하는그저기그사람들은요공양하는물품이그칼과똑같다면서요牙签上的卡罗都给他们说。哎，我们就是像那个一块石头给人家磨，给他亮的，给那个稻子亮的，是我们像那些石头一样。哎，그사람들은칼을갖고오면은우리는요그칼을베는그저기이거깎는그돌합똑같다면서그우리는돌이니까그사람들이칼을갖고와서우리한테이게그걸베다는그말씀입니다。要小心，不然等一下稻子亮，不过石头会不见了。越来越少，然后不见。诶，这个小心买几样的面料，个卡的料，它也厉害几个，它能不少几个，可以给调个米的。不少的怎么样？后来全部那个年轻的和尚然后离开。呃，为可能是去退了的料，去个老人，个那一晚出去个晚上，个人他们不投的料，我真的去摸着村民出屁股的料，他拿个什么的？不当和尚了。中年才去洗了手，拿拿个不得什么的。一阵子以后，就就汉德噶，去年去南国就让他拿个不得什么的。但比较不小心呢，受供养太多，然后修行少。诶，初心不是还要点米的？诚恳那个心呢，就被被删掉了。嗯。可阿就心善人，可妈咪讲了，心善可妈咪，诶，一个对我来，他不收几个，忙个金个米的。然后世俗的心要冒出来，我则冒出来，就。撑不住那和尚的辛苦的生活。세상의모든물질은우리를그렇게한민다그래서얼마길게수영을못하는겁니다어신부진아한거念佛啊，做早歌晚歌，不过心都不在了。그저거갑자기만났죠그저아침저녁으로불경을인다뿐이고진짜로수영한다는거없어진겁니다后来一个一个离开。그래서그뒤로는하나하나씩다떨어져나가겠지요是我的佛教的师傅告诉我那个故事。在这个布里格尔的他就那个参加噶，在越南的马生发生过米的。越南的故事。乌兰乌兰参加你们米的。好吧，如果没有问题，我们就放了，放松出去吃饭、买菜。你们帮外面的人买菜 ，OK？ 反正回家也要买嘛，帮他们买 ，OK？ 还柚子啊。一人几个，买带回去慢慢吃。反正中秋节来不来也可以吃啊。啊，柚子是很补的，很有营养啊。哎呀，南富老幼都可以吃啊。上次有一位队长来，拜托我让他那人们来这边卖那些柚子，我说谁吃啊？<笑>我们会帮他们买的。OK， 好。要买几个嘛？他们卖也很便宜，没什么贵。反正回去也要买啊，在这边顺顺手就买带回去，就不用去大市场买。他们自己种的，哎，自己卖的，没有经过任何中央人，爱心、爱力很多。嗯，我也有买给给这边的人吃，上个礼拜，上个星期天呢、啊。今天没有买了，我刚我刚去闭关回来，也不是完全闭关了，就是也是一边修修养一下，有一些业障要消化，呵呵大的业障要消化，顺便顺便为了动物，嗯、呃，祷告，嗯 ，OK， 如果没别事，我就告辞了，嗯。哎，请几位来吃饭，<笑>还有外国人来吃饭，<笑>哎，这么多恐怕不行，怎么办？上面也有台湾人呢、啊，没有啊，拿个台湾举手看看
，啊，这边有台湾，台湾就不要去哈，台上国外人可以去哈，啊，还有 S M T V 可以去哈 ，OK， 我真的很感谢 S M T V 工作人员，你懂吗？他们日夜工作。我有时候三更半夜吵他们起来，因为我工作改完以后，他们是要弄的。我不睡觉，我不会让他们睡的。<笑>因为我们连在一起嘛，工作是连在一起的。我们不是住在一起，不是连在一起，不过工作是连在一起的。没办法，没有他们我就不不能工作，啊，没有我他们不可以。<笑>就是不同的品质了，了解吗？好、okay, 嘞 ，OK，Thank、okay, you 了。然后再带他一句话 ，OK？Thank、okay? you for your love <笑>。感恩梅董吉哈，感恩贵董吉哈，谢谢同志们。<笑>感谢上，感谢你，<笑>感谢大家的爱，嗯。你们的爱啊，他很也是蛮鼓励我的，嗯，有时候很累也爬得起来。嗯、also protect me， <笑>也有帮助我，也有保护啦。嗯，爱丽都会保护 ，OK， 嗯，都会有保护心。我们的爱丽也会保护人呢 ，OK。不是师傅的爱力保护你们而已，你们一共合起来，爱力也蛮大，没了一点点，有错也有保护心，谢谢啦，嗯，爱你 ，Thank you， 哎呀，我绕不完，怎么办？<笑>要赶车的人先出去 ，OK？ 不赶的话留下来看一看，不然冲出去外面，我过去的时候也可以看，好吗？这样比较快。哎，大家出去，我在外面等你们都排两行，我就扫过去就全部都看光了。<笑>对呀、啊，在这边又绕很久，你们怎么那么漂亮哈？<笑>感谢啦，谢谢啦，哎。啊，对了，出去外面，我在外面看好吗？哎、啊，以后都是这样，好不好？啊，绕绕场比较花时间，嗯、啊，怕你们急了要回家，还有吃饭，好不好 ？OK，very、okay, good， 呀、yeah, ，让他们出来，让他们出来，我从这边出来也可以。哦，他他他，嘿，下雨不要出去，<笑>下雨了怎么办呢？啊 ，I go there my go car。啊，要不然我这样走，他们可以看得到比较好，是吗？好了，我不是这样走了，我这样走了。<笑> OK。